glad to be able to visit you in Colombo, Sri Lanka, and thank you very much for agreeing to answer a few questions on your views on computers and the information technology revolution. Fine. I will answer them or evade them as the case may be. What effect do you see in the accelerating development of information technology on the gap between the rich and the poor? Well, the gap between the rich and the poor, which is largely because of technology, uh, could be narrowed because equipment is becoming cheaper and there's no reason why every village in Asia and Africa shouldn't have at least one sort of workstation so the people would come to it. You don't need one in every in every house or in every hut but uh, the technology should be available whether it will be or not is another question depending on politics and economics but and I, I think that technology information technology can reduce the gap. But that depends on us, will we use it for that purpose? Do you agree that in the internet age, information should be free, with all of its implications concerning intellectual property and creative work? Well, more and more seems to be getting free these days, including telephone calls, and the argument about intellectual property, of course, uh, or history in my pocketbook, uh, <coughs> If everything was free and you weren't paid for anything, no one would do anything. So there has to be some arrangement for the, the, the people who create things should be rewarded in some in some way. Uh, hopefully not in the dot com stock. What nightmare scenarios, if any, do you foresee for the use of computers? Well, I think we're already involved in one nightmare scenario. I mean, how much? of one's day is now spent on email. I find it's absorbing more and more of my time. Uh, I haven't let it cut into my sleep yet, but I fear that's inevitable. Uh, so that's something which is already being to devour our time. And you know, we no longer have any time to think, to meditate. And that's a, a real problem. Sort of one tends to react to whatever is happening, but we don't have time to sit back and think, well, what should I do? What's the best thing to do? The promise of technology has often been to lessen the workload of human beings and provide a life of leisure. However, in many ways, people are working harder than ever. Do you think this trend will be finally reversed in the next half century? I can't see any, any reversal. It does seem to be continuing, but it has hit a limit. I mean, we can't work more than 24 hours a day. Um, I'm terrified that someone will invent a drug or something that will enable us to stay awake permanently. Uh, I think that would be the, the last advantage that anyone would ever make. I think we do need sleep if only to sort out our day's activities retrospectively and to then with the junk that's accumulated in our hard disks during the day. But um, uh, information technology and, and computers, of course, uh, enable us to do so much more but because of that, it, uh, we, we tend to do much more. I've sometimes said that uh, uh, far from being labor-saving or time-saving devices, uh, computers enable us to do ten times as much in twice the time. The time machine portrays a future where the human descendants become physically, mentally, and morally diminished because they no longer find challenges to overcome. Do you see this scenario as plausible over the next 50 years or even farther out? Well, the time machine was uh, well, was his masterpiece, and I have a signed portrait of him just above my head at the moment. Um, and it, it, it imagine the world dividing into these two species almost, the effete um, creatures who lived on the surface and were looked after, and uh, you know, every, all the needs were provided by the workers underground at a terrible cost because they eventually were eaten by the workers underground. Uh, it's a terrifying scenario and, uh, you know, it's, uh, should, it could be possible. At least I, but I don't think it would happen because uh, 
and the division is going to be between the humans and the robots, not between two species of humans. Until we are technically more capable than we are now, do you see any bands that make sense for the use of information technology? I can see good arguments for trying to impose a ban on certain areas, but I don't think it'll be practical because whatever happens, some ingenious guy in a garage somewhere will do it anyway. As mankind evolves to the stages of hunting, gathering, agriculture, industry, services, information, what is the next stage on the horizon? That is, when we have exhausted the information stage by robots or AI during all the mental and physical work that we do now, what would come next? Well, we can never exhaust information. You know, the universe is an infinite in as far as information content is concerned. In fact, you can take a tiny little bit of well, they say mathematics, and even that area is infinite. You can never exhaust that. And uh, so there's no danger of running out of challenges or interesting things to do. Uh, but I'm afraid that um, virtual reality, you know, which is going to be the next big thing, is going to be so much more attractive than real life that people just won't make the effort to do these things. They just lie back and enjoy inputs into their brains and the, that could very well be the end of the human race. That's an old idea in science fiction, of course. And um, Lawrence Manning wrote a story again more than 50 years ago called The City of Living Dead, which was about this ultimate stage when we're all, when we're all the ultimate couch potatoes just plugged in and our computers feed us everything we want. Um, but then they might get fed up with doing that and then unplug us and that would serve us right. Do you expect the advances in information technology will shed any light on the enduring question of God and Creator? Well, the whether God exists or who created us, of course, are, are the fundamental questions. And uh, this was summed up in a famous uh, story, I think, by Frederick Brown, who was half a century ago, when the <clears throat> ultimate computer is built and they ask him, is there a God? It says, now there is. <laughs> uh, this is Arthur Clark in Sri Lanka uh, saying goodbye to my friend. Thank you for this interview, and I hope we could have the opportunity to continue this dialogue at a later time.